EFCC begins extradition process by obtaining arrest warrant for former Petroleum Minister Dezani Alison Madweke. Group demands release of panel report on a number of extrajudicial killings. We'll also have Off the Press where we'll look at the headlines that made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's a Wednesday frenzy and we do hope that you're having a wonderful time. Whatever it is, may today be kind to you. And if you're going to work, uh, whatever uh, part of Lagos that you are, we hope that you're going to find the means of transportation to get there. Thank God there are trains that will move around or that have, have been moving around right now to convey people from mile two to marina and back and making up to seven trips or more. Uh, but we would also like to thank the government for making sure that uh, the BRT buses are moving quite early nowadays. You know, sometimes we were complaining that they do not move on time. So if you need to get to the office on time and uh, you have the opportunity of taking a BRT, uh, maybe because of the time that they begin, it will deprive you of that opportunity. But right now, there are people who move, for instance, from Ojodu Bega to CMS, to Obalinde, to other places as early as 5.30. And that is commendable. Uh, what is left now is that there should be more routes for BRTs to apply uh, for people to enjoy. For instance, you're going to Bariga and the farthest you can go is maybe mile two or something like that. And if you cannot get to uh, Badagri, not Bariga, Badagri, if you cannot get to Badagri by uh, BRT, that means the people who will take you from mile two to Badagri will, might exploit you. And all the benefits that Lagosians are enjoying by boarding BRT, they may not enjoy on that exit. It, that's not really fair. So something should be done about it. There should be more buses and there should be more routes to, <coughs> uh, for the buses to ply. Okay, so there are some things that happened that we can say are uh, top trending for us. And one of them is that the Chief of Army Staff has ordered investigation into allegations of troops poor feeding. Remember that the Chief of Army Staff, uh, Lieutenant General Toarit Lagbaja, ordered this investigation into allegation of poor feeding of frontline troops in the Northeast Theater of Operation. The Director of Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Onye Manwachuku, made this known in a statement on Tuesday in Abuja. And he said that the welfare of troops has been given premium by the present leadership of the Nigerian Army and was one of the vital pillars of the Chief of Army Staff's command philosophy targeted at motivating the force. Wachuku also assured the public and all Army personnel that a thorough investigation would be conducted to get to the bottom of the claims. He said the Nigerian army had always prioritized the welfare of troops, including their nutrition, adding that it has a comprehensive feeding system of troops, especially those serving at the front line. He, however, acknowledged that there may be isolated incidents where lapses occur, but assured that the Nigerian army is committed to addressing them. And according to him, an internal investigation has already been initiated to ascertain the truth behind the allegation, promising to thoroughly examine the supply chain, the quality of food provided, and any other factors that may have contributed to the situation. And that's why he stressed that the Nigerian army remained committed to transparency and accountability and would not condone any form of negligence or misconduct from their personnel. And he called on personnel to report any grievances or concerns they might have regarding their feeding arrangements through the established channels for feedback, assuring that prompt action would be taken to address any legitimate uh, complaints. He also declared that the army would continue to be resolute in the fight against insurgency and other security challenges and would ensure that its soldiers were provided with the necessary support and care to carry out their duties effectively. We do hope that they have also uh, upped their game in terms of allowances for the day. There was a time that we were hearing something like 500 Naira a day, and which was raised to about 1,000 or 1,002 or thereabouts, and so on. So um, 
it's like in football. A lot of people say a lot of people who play uh, or players who play outside Nigeria are more committed to their clubs and are not to the Nigerian national team. That is because they are confident that even if they get injured, even if they die, even if anything happens to them, they are sure of something getting back to their families. And that is not the case with uh, the Nigerian uh, Football Federation because you might be a national hero and then die so poor and if something happens to you that is the end or that might be the end of your career your life and any kind of prosperity that could have come to you and it could be the same thing with the nigerian army we do hope that something will be done about it to get more commitment from these people who protect our territorial integrity who protect our lives and property and doing even more they should be in the bushes uh, protecting our people. But they also do a lot within the society that um, maybe the police cannot do. So their duties are even more than they're supposed to be. The police is supposed to take care of the civil society and they are supposed to protect our territorial integrity and remain there. But that is not the case for our Nigerian uh, troops. They're fighting Boko Haram, they're fighting ISWAP, they're fighting so many people, and then they're still fighting uh, internal conflicts within the country. So the government should be deliberate about it. We also know that NPA has ejected policemen from barracks. Uh, occupants get uh, 200,000 naira each. Uh, there is this report that anxiety, there's anxiety among the police officers who reside in the Nigerian Port Authority barracks in the Sunrise Apapa area of Lagos as they have been asked by the NPA authorities uh, to exit the premises within two weeks. It is being uh, reported that the barracks have been sold and that residents were paid 200,000 naira each to leave the premises. While the policemen were initially given three months to vacate the barracks, the deadline had been reduced to two weeks which did not go down well with the affected persons. And now the fate of over 200 occupants of the barracks is uncertain while police authorities are being asked to intervene. Now I'm asking, uh, why did they eject them? They're saying that they've sold the place. They've sold the place to who? Uh, the police barracks sold to who? Uh, was it bought by the government itself? And then 200,000, what kind of a house will that get? Uh, the average... Um, uh, mini flat now, which is a, a room and parlor, having a big name, just a room and parlor, uh, like Nigerians would say, room and parlor, self con. <laughs> will not, you cannot get it for 200,000, except maybe you're getting it it's at some place like uh, Badagri, or you're going to the outskirts of uh, Lagos, you're going to uh, some places in Ogun State, like Ibafo, you're going to uh, Mowe, you're going to so many other places that you can get accommodation. But if you're saying Lagos State 200,000 accommodation for the year, I'm not sure you can get uh, that that will be comfortable for you and your family. And this has been established by the government. So who did they sell it to? Who is making this money? Why is it just 200,000 Naira that is going to be given to these people to settle them? How much were they paying when they were staying at the quarters? And if they were not paying anything or they were paying so small, that means it was part of a, a welfare package, so to speak. And now you're being, they're being driven into, into the wild as it is with 200,000. Will this 200,000 be given every year? We'll still get the details from uh, what is happening and why this has to be, had to be taken, this decision had to be taken. But we do hope that these families will not be stranded and they will find somewhere to lay their heads. And then uh, OAU students' protest tuition hike is another thing that uh, really interested us um, and we wanted to talk about. The students of Obafemi Awolowo University of Shun State have staged a protest against the hike in school fees. The students who stomped the varsity uh, premises began the protest early Tuesday morning, carrying placards reading, when I they pay 20K, I they borrow money, where you won't make I see 90K. <laughs> so from 20 to 90K now. Uh, the other one was uh, hashtag fee must fall. I cannot afford to drop out. Fee must fall. My mama they sell fufu, my papa they ride okada, where you won't make I see 90K. 
fee must fall. Hashtag. So uh, those were some of the placards they were carrying. The Secretary General of the Varsity Student Union, Akimboni Okwayemi, confirmed this, adding that the student populace does not agree with the current tuition fee. The Students' Union on September 26 urged students of the institution to suspend payment of tuition fees following the slash in fee hike by the management of the institution. A statement by the Public Relations Officer of the University, Abiodun Olarimwaju, stated that the management reduced the fees after a meeting held with the students. Olarimwaju had said that the students' union leaders were adamant, insisting that the fees should be reduced by 50%. The Vice-Chancellor Professor Adebayo Simon Bamire, however, stated that the charges initially announced have been reduced, but not by the 50% being demanded by the students' unions. Uh, he added that the university management had agreed that the payment can be made in two equal installments. The Secretary General of the Varsity Students' Union, however, revealed that a reduction by the school management was instead 15%. Okwayemi also uh, revealed that the Students' Union had written to all uh, respective banks to halt the acceptance of fee payments from any student until a better resolution has been achieved, adding that they might have to shut down all activities on campus and progressively on all campuses throughout the country if the school authorities remain silent on the issue. And I think it's just a psychological thing that authorities use most times to do what they need to do. If they were paying 20,000 Naira as school fees, and then they now said 90,000, and everybody was afraid and saying reduce, and then they reduced to 45,000, that means they have still uh, increased the school fees by more than 100%. So 20,000 to 40,000 is 100% already, and then there's a 5,000 on top. And that is in the time or at the time when um, rents have gone up. Not all the students live on campus. And so if you were living in somebody's house and you were paying 100000 for the one room that you were staying, and now it is 150 or 200000 that you're paying, the school fees have gone up 100%. The rents have gone up 100%. The food that you eat every day has gone up 100%. And so... Where lies the solace for the common man in Nigeria? I know a lot of people who have dropped out of uh, tertiary institutions because of this. I know that some people will come out and say education should not be cheap. If you need to go to school, you have to be ready for it. And trust me, 80% of the people who will be saying that may have had free education sponsored by the, the, the country, and they will come out and say that. So. Why not leave the choice in the hands of the people who want to either go to school or not go to school? And by the way, how much are we doing about vocational trainings in Nigeria? Uh, I don't know if we're doing enough because even our uh, institutions do not even have something to uh, make practical learning a thing at all in schools. And then we're telling people that education is uh, cheaper than ignorance, so you have to pay if you need to go to school. I don't know how that is a good thing to say in a country like Nigeria. A country is not great by just the number of people that it has. A country is great by the number of people who are educated enough to make a change. So if South Korea is not as great as we are, or is not as populated as we are, or North Korea, and they are advancing in technology more than we are, there could be a greater country than we are. South Korea has invested about a billion dollars in AI training. How much has Nigeria done to invest in AI training? China is trying to invest in AI training to the tune of over $200 billion. How much is Nigeria thinking about? And the future is technology, and then we're not talking about it. We're making uh, education so expensive that only the people that can afford it uh, at exorbitant prices can go to school again. So we are, we are making almajaris out of our children from north to the south, and I don't think that is going to be a good thing. But hey, I'm not a policymaker. Those who make policies and make laws for us think about it. Because when we have more people on the streets trying to, using the Nigerian word, hustle, we may find it really terrible in the future. But that is not our portion. That's a Nigerian thing. That's not our portion. So we hope that something will be done about it, especially education. Now we heard that the budget will be better in education uh, from now on. 
but we also know that student loans that the set will come up in September uh, I haven't heard much about it if uh, something is being done about it, but I haven't heard, and so many Nigerians haven't heard. So the presidency should come out and tell us what is happening. How, have people begun accessing these loans, and what is the criteria? Did they, did they adjust anything in the criteria? Because what they told us before um, was not practicable at all. Uh, so it was next to having nobody going to access that loan. So they should be open to us and let's see how we move from there. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Um, another thing that interested us um, was the fact that um, someone in the presidency in a, a committee that is supposed to be, um, for let's just say, uh, Someone in the presidency said that uh, we should pray as Nigerians that refineries should never work. Refineries should never work. That is the chairman of the Presidential Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms Committee. Taiwo Oyedele says that we Nigerians should pray that refineries should never work. And what he said was that the incompetence of the people who will run it, they, the way it will be run, will make uh, fuel to cost even more than it is costing right now. And a lot of people have come out to say that is a very cheap excuse. So if you feel that there is incompetence in the running of that thing, why not privatize it and make the private individuals run it uh, because they will do better? Why not put the mechanisms in place that will check uh, the people who have been running down our institutions in our country, Nigeria? Why not be more proactive? For instance, the other time we were talking about the fact that if you go to the UAE, in just a single room, there is a screen of about 250 feet that monitors every blessed drop of oil in that country, where it's drilled from, where it goes, where it has reached at any particular point until it is the final product that goes to the people and everything is accounted for. They know how much is uh, spent, how much is gained and everything. And that can be affordable. That can be affordable by a country like Nigeria. But hey, nobody wants to think about that because we just feel, oh, Nigerian people, they will do X, Y, Z. Why not try and do something that will check everything? For instance, I remember a time when the governor of Cross River State, now it's in every state, the governor of Cross River State said there was not going to be payment uh, by hand anymore. Everybody will be receiving payment through banks. They nearly beat him up. If he were not governor, I'm thinking they would have beaten him up uh, for bringing such a thing. Because people who were paying by hand, you will not have change for everybody who is collecting salary. So you will be dropping a, a hundred naira that change was not available to give to you. You will be leaving five naira that change was not available to give to you. And at the end of the day, the people were feeding fat. And some people that may not be available to collect their salary for one thing or the other, for one reason or the other, had their salaries cut and all that. So he said, okay, we're going to go electronic. Everybody will be paid through the bank. We'll be doing verifications through the bank. The uproar was terrible. But at the end of the day, people started enjoying it. Nobody missed a cover from their money. So there are things that we can do. And knowing that technology has come to stay, AI is, has come to stay, everybody is talking technology. Why not think about technological ways or some other innovations that will make sure there is no wastage in any of our national assets? Well, that was what he said. And if Nigerians go on their knees to pray and pray that our refineries should not work, I wonder what we will be praying to work in Nigeria because whatever will be the result or the reason for these things, these refineries failing and not producing optimally and doing what we're expecting it to do, uh, will also enter into every other institution. So Nigeria should just fold their arms or Nigerians should just fold their arms and, said, and say that Nigeria has gone bad, nothing can be done about it. Well, that is his own opinion and we are entitled to our own opinion. But Nigeria must work and we have to put our hands uh, on deck, all of us, to make sure that it works. So ask yourself, what are you contributing to the growth of Nigeria? It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a break and when we return, we'll be looking at the papers. Stay with us.